Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Giz, I'm going to be talking about Canonical's announcement today about their real-time kernel, Ubuntu. Today, Canonical released their real-time Linux kernel based on the Linux kernel 5.15 LTS version. And that is included uh, in both ARM and x86 architectures. Canonical's real-time kernel integrates out-of-tree preemptive RT, and those are patches that are provided to the Linux Foundation for incorporating into the Linux kernel. Now, you might say, whoa, wait a minute. The Linux kernel already has real-time. Why are we developing something new? Well, there's some problems. There's some problems with the old real-time uh, engine uh, that is in the Linux kernel that is impacting the way that the system is able to respond to events today. Sometimes, uh, in, in some applications, the latencies, which have to be predictable, uh, very predictable and critical real-time uh, efforts, is not always good with the existing one. And so Canonical felt that they needed to change that to make it more preemptive so that it would be more responsive to those uh, applications that required it. So can it, it can be accessed, how do you get it? It can be accessed through the Ubuntu Pro subscription, which, by the way, is free for a, a, up to a certain number of servers. I don't remember what the count is, maybe 15, something like that. So it's available for most Ubuntu uh, variants. However, it is on the 2204 LTS, and I don't think I saw it made available on 2210, but I could be, I could be wrong about that. Some of the limitations with uh, the uh, preemptive RT is that you can't use it with live patch because it interferes with what live patch is trying to do. Uh, and second, you can't use it if you're using proprietary NVIDIA graphics and have that installed on your system. So I don't know what the reasons are. Those are just things that they're saying. I'll, I'll find out more about it, and I'll report back with a longer video to explain all this. What is a real-time kernel anyway? What does it do? So a real-time kernel is a time-bound system. Not bomb, but time-bound. When something has to happen within fixed time frames. So uh, think of it this way. So I've got, I've got a conveyor. And there's a bunch of stuff going down the conveyor. There are a bunch of widgets that need to be worked on. And they are separated by a certain amount of time. My application, if I have robots that are doing picking operations or placing components on boards, for example, have to complete it before that thing, before that fixture and that board moves further down the line so it's out of reach, right? So that's an example of where real time happens. If you fail to place, if you fail, if the robot fails to uh, pick one of the uh, components that it has in its inventory list, well, then that board fails, right? You can't use it. So there are consequences to failing an event. And sometimes it can be trivial like that. Uh, sometimes it can be catastrophic, like if it's in an automotive application where you have self-driving, so an event happens ahead of you where a vehicle slams on its brakes and your self-driving system has to recognize that and apply the brakes soon enough to avoid a collision. So, and if it fails to do that, yeah, there are catastrophic events that it can occur. So think of it like, uh, like that. Think of it like the conveyor where you have a fixed amount of time to work on something before, yeah, the event's over and it's too late to do anything about it. It all centers around uh, preemption or more specifically kernel preemption, but there's more to it than that. Uh, just sticking in a real-time kernel doesn't make your system a real-time system because there's you have to architect every aspect of it. It's not just the kernel in order to be a real-time system. It can, of course, mean that you have optimized performance in those instances, but what about more general purpose type computing? Is it, Well, that sounds good. Let's just put this in on all of our systems. <laughs> Hold up. You don't want to do that. Most of the cases for general computing want the application to run as long as possible. 
They don't want to be preempted. Preemptive stops the execution of your application. And it goes off and it does something else and then it comes back. That is not necessarily a good thing. In real time, you are dividing up basically the system into time slots. And so you are going to have, in, in the cases of general computing, that's going to appear to you as worse performance. If you're thinking, oh, I can just speed up my game, I can go throw a real-time kernel on it, my game will be faster, right? No, probably just the opposite will happen. It will be worse. At least that's been my experience with them. Unless the systems are designed for specific applications that require time-critical processing. Real-time kernels are for intensive real-time use cases, not for general purpose computing tasks. RTS is designed for applications with hard deadlines. So think of it that way. Who benefits? In healthcare, you may have life support equipment that has to you know, monitor a patient. There's also medical ro robots that are performing surgery today. So those have real-time support issues as well that they need to address. Uh, there's also medical devices that are monitoring a large number of sensors. Uh, that need to be uh, that need to have a real-time system embedded in them in order to do that efficiently. Real-time uh, kernels are best used, uh, Canonical says, with Ubuntu Server uh, 2204 LTS or Ubuntu Core 22 deployments. Core uh, 22 is their container-based application which is designed for cloud environments. So who benefits from the real-time kernel? Uh, generally, it's going to be AI in the IoT market on small processors, small ARM machines, for example, automotive and self-driving in instances, uh, embedded Linux applications like in a lab where it's monitoring the outcome of an experiment or in a chemical factory where it's monitoring the flow of chemicals into the processing and output of others. Uh, it also is uh, for IoT devices robotics, uh, and also telco. Watch for a more in-depth video on this coming in the future. I intend to install this, play around with it, and I'll share with you my experiences with it. I'm planning to do this on a Raspberry Pi, which is one of the other things they support with it. I hope to see you then, and hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. See you soon. Bye for now.